Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about SharePoint hub sites for dummies and we're going to be talking all things about what is a SharePoint hub site as well as some of the key features that you can get by using SharePoint hub sites. So the first thing to talk about is what is a SharePoint hub site? So Microsoft defined SharePoint hub sites as the ability to help you meet the needs of your organization by connecting and organizing sites based on project or department, division, region, or other types of categories of SharePoint sites, making it easier to discover related content such as news, documents, events, and other site activities. You can apply common navigation as well as a themed branding and an overall site structure across all the sites which are associated to that hub site. So let's take a look at a quick example. So this is a SharePoint hub site. Typically SharePoint hub sites are the home page of your intranet. Now, if you're a small or medium sized organization, typically you might only have the one hub site. It's quite typical just to have the one. Whereas if you are a very large enterprise organization, say for example, you're operating the US, Europe and Asia, you might have three independent um, hub sites for that. This is a typical internet homepage with news, events, buttons, roll-ups of, um, sort of from Twitter and other kind of key areas uh, of information. So let's talk a little bit about the features of a hub site. So what is SharePoint hub site navigation? Now this is one of the first obvious um, features of a SharePoint hub site is the navigation bar that we get across the top. This navigation bar is actually controlled specifically from the hub site itself, but all of the sites which are associated to this hub site will in fact roll up that information directly um, onto its own site. So say for example, I've defined that I'm going to have um, a link to all my department sites, all my news related sites and apps as part of my hub site navigation. Um, and actually all sites which are associated to that, so let's take for example this department site, this finance communication site, is actually using this navigation by inheriting um, it from the hub site that it's associated to. You can see on the finance site, if I click on the cog and then click on site information, I can actually see from this drop down which hub site I'm actually associated to. So I'm associated to the hub, which is my top layer site, and then that's inherited my navigation. You can also see I can go straight back to the top of my hub site by clicking on the name of the hub site on the, the left hand side. You can also include a little logo if you wanted to. If you want a little logo on your hub navigation bar, you can place that on there as well. You can also see that the hub navigation bar is a form of mega menu in the sense that you can hover over it and it will drop down into a couple of different layers. So you've got, for example, layer one, which is news, layer two, which is UK news, and layer three, which is BBC news. And you can actually create every layer. It can either be what we call a label, which is a non-clickable piece of text like this UK news or US news, or you can create a link, a hyperlink, as in as long as it's got a URL and it's going to something, it could be anything. It could be a link to a SharePoint document or file or folder or another SharePoint site, like linking to a finance site, or you can link to something external like BBC News or CNN or another type of news website, which is external to SharePoint. It's really simple to edit the hub navigation bar. All we need to do is click on this edit button and you'll notice we can only click on this edit button from the hub site. You can't do it from a site which is associated to the hub site. It has to be from the actual top hub site. Then we can see, we can see all the links in here. It's really easy just to click and add on a new link, paste in the address. So let's just say we're going to add a link to Google. Uh, display name will be Google and then click on OK and I'll add our link. We can choose to move it around whether it sits underneath something by clicking on make sublink and that would then be a link underneath apps for example like so and we can move those up and down to play around to get that layout how we want for example like news uk news bbc so another key feature of hub sites is 
uh, explaining what is SharePoint Hub Site permissions. So SharePoint Hub Site permissions is the ability to set permissions at the Hub Site layer, which is then synced up to the, all the other SharePoint sites which are associated to that Hub Site. So this is replacing the need for kind of classic um, SharePoint structures where you had subsites and you would define the permissions at the top layer, and then they would then cascade down to all the subsites which sat underneath that top site collection. Um, this is actually using a syncing function. So let's take a quick look at that as well. So all we need to do is click on the cog uh, at the top right hand corner of our hub site and click on site permissions. And then you'll see that there's an option here which has got hub, which has got the ability then to actually sync the hub permissions to the associated sites. So once you've defined your permissions, all you need to do is flick on that switch and that will then enable the permissions to be synced directly to all the communication sites and team sites which are inheriting that hub site. The next key feature of a SharePoint hub site that I often um, explain to people is, is what is SharePoint hub site content rollup? So this is a very common question uh, when you're building out your intranet homepage and you're thinking about bringing content onto the homepage of your SharePoint site. Things like news or events uh, or even documents, you can roll these up from all the sites which are associated to your hub site as your home page of your SharePoint intranet um, and display them to a user. So let's take a look. So if I jump into the home page and click on edit and then I scroll down to say for example my news web part which by the way is really easy to add to a page so I'm just going to choose to actually remove my events web part uh, sorry my news web part and re-add it. You just need to click on this little plus button here to add your web part search for news which adds the news web part then what i can do is i can select the edit web part and you can see it's already selecting all sites in the hub meaning that it's actually pulling all the news articles from all the associated sites all i then need to do is choose a layout that i'm happy with um, so i think before uh, i might have been using top story and um, let's just say actually let's get some more on there just so it's a bit more obvious so we'll use hub uh, news and then all I need to do then is click on republish after it making sure that this is selected to all sites in the hub as my new source. What that's basically doing is pulling all the news articles from all the sites which are associated. So you can see here's a news article created on my operations department site. Here's a news article that's been created on my finance uh, site or a news article created on the human resources site. And if I click on that news article, it'll actually take me to the news article on that department site, which is actually uh, associated to my um, hub site. So this can be content rollup, which is not only news, but we can also do this with events. So if I go back into edit web, uh, edit the page, and then edit the web part, um, you can also see I've got the ability to select um, all sites in the hub, uh, and this will then pull all the events from the department sites or all any other sites which are associated to this hub site. You can also do it with documents as well. So if you add a web part uh, which is called uh, highlighted content, um, you can see we can also pull out documents from all sites in the hub as well. And this might be filtered down that you want, might want specific things, like you want videos or you might want images or things like that which have been uploaded um, to the site. But essentially the source is it's pulling all content and it's rolling up from that hub site and all of the sites associated to that hub site. So to finalize the, the, this, another common question is what are SharePoint hub site limitations? So um, I'm not gonna preach and say that the, the, these hub sites are limitless. The main limitation to be aware of is that you can only create up to 2000 hub sites or associated sites. So you can have um, one site and then 1,999 sites associated to this. Um, so this applies to hub to hub associations as well. Um, uh, and any site as a hub site will count against this limit. So just be aware of that. If it is an enterprise level organization and you've got thousands of sites, then do consider um, how many of these sites are being associated together. If you're a small or medium-sized organization, you'll be miles away from hitting this particular threshold, this limitation. So don't worry about that too much. I hope you enjoyed that video all about SharePoint hub sites. Um, if you did, please do like and subscribe to the channel for future SharePoint top tips. If you've got any questions about SharePoint hub sites or anything Microsoft 365, please use the comments um, box below.
um, and I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. Or if you've got any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see about SharePoint or Microsoft 365, then please let me know. And thank you very much for your time watching this video.